Hey guys, it's Ray for PandaCanDo.com. Uh, today's video is a little bit of a longer one. It's somebody asked me what I carry out of all the medical supplies and survival gear we sell. What I personally carry um, for my first aid kit on the go. So here it is. Um, it's an REI load, L-O-D-E, it says over here, fanny pack. Um, and I, I don't have an REI store in my area, so I didn't buy this uh, retail. I just picked it up at a thrift store uh, one day, and I'm fairly happy with it. Um, so let's get into it. Um, start off with, um, I have an old uh, bobby whistle uh, that the London police used to use, and it says 1935 on it. And you, you can pick these up cheap if you just want it for the sort of cool, old-fashioned police things. You can get... Um, you know they're collectible depending on on what city they're from and and all that but um most of them are just generic and they they're more than just police they used them in marines and military and everywhere so some will have markings uh some of them won't you get them cheap on on ebay as a collector item um uh, you know five ten bucks maybe um but you're sort of better off with the little plastic ones and we'll probably start carrying those eventually the little plastic um peeless whistles this this is um is a um a peeless whistle as well, um, but it is metal and it is somewhat heavy. Uh, I had it on my keychain for a while and it wasn't real comfortable. If I keep it on here, it's a nice little emergency whistle. Um, it's got that bobby whistle um, sound, so it's got a very unique sound. It's not just a high pitch whistle. It's it's got a, it's a two tone whistle. That's what the two slots are for. Is it it makes an interesting um, sort of sound. Um, another thing I did um, to this bag right away was we, we sell a glow in the dark. Uh, tape and it's not just any glow in the dark, kid stars on the ceiling type tape. Uh, cheap stuff made in China that doesn't work very well. This stuff they use on um, naval ships in the United States Navy, and they use it for exit marking and in, in the event of power outages and fires and stuff. Um, and it is really powerful. It isn't just it charges really well, and you can see like even just blocking that much light, and with all this ambient uh, light here you can still see a bit of a, a glow there. You can see it go from from just a pale color to having a bit of a glow. And I'm not even showing it in the dark, uh, which is hard to do. I could film it in the dark, but these cameras don't don't pick up things well in the dark, so you don't get a very good, you get a bunch of grain, uh, graininess around it. Um, so I did that on these. Um, you can buy this, and we have it in two inch wide strips and then whatever length uh, you need. Um, and we put it, you know, it's for putting on our survival tins. You can put it on your trucks. Um, uh, you can put it on a really great thing is put it on a little panel um, on one side of like a plastic sheet um, and I'm trying to find something that I can get sort of uh, retail or I mean wholesale you some sort of sheeting uh, out of plastic that could be cut it'd be good for this you put the tape on one side of, of a hard sheet because um, it can't be something real flexible or the, the glue won't stick on the, the adhesive on the back won't stick um, so you put it on one side and on the other side you might put some uh, Velcro strips on that flat plastic, and then that way you can put Velcro strips on on the dashboard of your truck, on the roof of your um, your RV or your house, and then come and have that panel to be able to just stick on there. And the reason I say do that instead of the adhesive is you know the adhesive is going to be it's going to stay there and it's it's you, it's going to be hard to ever get off if you want want to get it off. Um, and also you may not want that glow all the time, so it's nice to be able to pull it off and and set it face down on something so that you, you, the glow is not there, especially if it's in like a bedroom, if you're camping and car camping or something, or an RV, or even your bedroom in your house, you're using this emergency light. You know, you can set it in the windowsill uh, in a bedroom, for example, to, to absorb light all day long. And if there was a power outage, you could go over there and you'd have that glow. But you're going to want to be able to sleep and everything, and be able to not, if you're trying to be more stealthy and not draw attention, you're, you're going to want to be able to set that somewhere in a drawer or down, face down, so that you, you don't have the glow. So that's a great thing to do with it. Um, you can do a million things. So this is one little concept I came up with. And the reason I came up with this was at night I would be walking with this fanny pack and the zipper might be over here or it might be over on this side. And I didn't know and I was just feeling. And it was taking time to try and find find the zipper and, and get a, um, get a, 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 find out where it is and get this open. Um, and the other problem was I was grabbing the wrong zipper. I'd find one and I'd pull on it. Um, and it was the bottom one, and it would cause that kind of a drag. It's not opening now, and it's not wanting to move, and I would have to figure out that, oh, okay, it's that one. Um, 
So that's something I didn't see. So you can come up with really cool different things. You can put it on your flashlight. So here's a, um, this is a 4.7's uh, Quark um, 123 Pro, I think is what they call this model. Um, and you can see I've taken the stripping and put it on, on each of these little flat panels. And there's actually three. There's one under the clip. And I didn't put one under there because um, I assume the clip's going to be, you know, the back side of it. The front side's going to be showing here. Um, and then I put three on the top here um, so I can tell which side has the button on it. And I can, I, and you can see I put them on, on, on different, a different lineup to these. So no matter what side's facing, you always see this glow in the dark. So that's great. So you can find the flashlight because what's good is your light source if you can't find it to turn it on. Um, so that's really handy. Uh, one thing is I keep it in the fanny pack, and so this doesn't get charged. Like these just walking around, even just a little tiny bit, these are always getting charged. This, if it's in the pack, and you haven't had it out, you haven't been opening the pack and getting into it, by the time nighttime comes, it won't be charged up. So you may want to, this would be better if it was, I put it on a lanyard so it doesn't get lost, and you'd want to do the same thing if you're going to do this, but you could clip it on the outside. And I've done that before where I've clipped it on the outside or on the edge of a pocket. And then this gets a chance to charge, and it's a little easier to get your hands on. Um, so there's the flashlight I carry, and I have a couple other flashlights I'll do a video on at some point. Real high end, four uh, sevens is always the way to is the way to go, in my opinion. They, they make really great products. So um, I carry a survival, one of our survival tins. You can see my stickers getting a little worn there, and the tins getting some good, healthy, honest uh, dings and and scrapes in it. But I think that's that's a cool thing to to have old tins that have shown some shown some use. Um, so I have one of the survival tins um, and I've got just a basic um, pocket first aid set up from us in here. Um, alcohol prep pad there. There's some mole skin if I get blisters or something. Uh, here's some, uh, and that also is handy. Oh, I threw it off screen. That's brilliant. Um, there's some, uh, the mole skin's also kind of handy because it's a little piece of tape. You know, if you need to tape something, it's a good adhesive tape. So it has some other uses just as that as well. Uh, these are these super high-end um, povidone iodine, uh, which is abbreviated PVP iodine, ointments, which is the sort of superior hospital grade alternative to a triple antibiotic. You can learn more about those in another video because uh, that's a bit of a lecture. Um, some of our OTC meds, I've got some diphenhydramine, which is um, something we always are, are raving about because it's a three-in-one. Um, it's basically like Sudafed over-the-counter version. Uh, it's Diphen's the brand name, but the drug's called Diphenhydramine, and it's a it ca it's a anti-motion sickness that causes drowsiness, like you would take on on a ferry. Um, so the drowsiness, they also sell this over the counter as a sleeping pill, and just don't bother to tell you that it's the same drug that you get for the motion sickness one, and that they're selling it to you as the drowsy one, and then the motion sickness is going to be the side effect, the calming to the stomach. It's more than just motion; it's it's nausea. It'll get rid of nausea, whatever the whatever the cause of the nausea. Well, almost whatever cause. Uh, if you got food poisoning, you probably don't want to be taking that. Um, and then the third thing it does is it's a, an antihistamine. Um, so you can, this is what we sell is is your emergency antihistamine. And there's one little pill in there. So I keep some of that on me, um, more for other people than for myself, because uh, I don't have too much problem with the motion sickness um, or sleeping. Um, but it's great for camping. You want to get some sleep. You haven't been able to get good rest. It's nice to have that. Um, and again, if somebody has allergic reaction, gets a bee sting, you can get them to chew that. Um, um, and there's another trick about that I'll talk about in the future about people with bee stings. Some aspirin, um, great to have, fever reducer and all that. Diamode, which is a um, anti-diarrheal. Um, we have a newer packaging for this, so I'm, I'm using some old sort of surplus stuff of ours that's, that's expired. But all these drugs are fine after, you know, decades after being expired. But they end up in my kit usually only if they're if, if something's wrong with it or it was a sample or something or it's expired and it can't be sold. Here's some Q-tips. Um, one thing we'll do sometimes is, you know, we'll sell you the cotton swabs, but we'll also, um, for small packs like these little tins, and especially our two-ounce survival tins, we'll cut cut them in half. Very handy. You know, just ear cleaning if you're out camping or, or traveling or whatever, but also you know, a wound a probe that's somewhat sterile, you're not touching things if you've been out um, camping and, and your hands are nasty and all that, um, and all the different good uses for that. Uh, some little um, 
butterfly bandages. I gotta get through this stuff kind of quick. Here's uh, one of our disposable thermometers. You can learn more about mercury free, super flat, easy to use. Um, lots of great benefits. This is an older one. We now have ours now have a yellow tip on it. With the ultras. Um, so that's great. I fold them over. It doesn't hurt to fold them over. All the chemical stuff is right in the tip here. So as long as you're not crushing and folding the tip, you're fine. All this bottom stuff is just it's just like a plastic coffee stir. This is so you can fold them over. You can cut that off if you really want to just cut on weight. And I have 20 of these, maybe in a little tin. Uh, here's one of the little ampules of the again the PVP iodine in a liquid. So you crush this. There's an inner, inner glass and outer plastic. Makes the PVP run to the tip. Um, and you can dab that on after stitches or a major gash and you've bandaged up maybe with the butterfly dressings or some of our Steri strips that we sell. Triple antibiotic, this is a great little thing to do is, and we sell these in, in groups in, in like 10 to a pack where you take, it's a little Ziploc baggie, it's got triple antibiotic and it's got a couple band-aids. And the genius thing there is is you just, if somebody's got a little scrape, you're not digging through all your gear and and pulling stuff out. You can just have ten of these or five of these in your uh, in your medical bag and if you come across some kids got a little scrape or you're out camping and one of the one person gets a little blackberry thorn or, or something scrape, you can just hand them that and it's there's no very little cost there. It's already pre-packaged. They don't have to worry about you know is it nasty or how long has it been in your bag and all that stuff. It, it looks very professional and nice and they've got everything they need. They got the antibiotic, they got the um, the bandage and sometimes we'll have these I think when we do them a lot of times they have a little alcohol prep pad in there too so they can sort of sterilize the site and, and then put their stuff on there so that was a very cool little thing in the bottom I've just got some gauze this is some loose gauze I had um, and I just uh, baggied it and, and stuffed it in there and it was just sort of fire starting uh, add a little cushion to the bag because I had some stuff that was rattling around I wanted to cut the noise which is a nice little trick to do and it's nice to have a little tiny bit of gauze because I'm not going to fit much gauze in a tin like that so it was a good way of having a tiny little bit um, in case there's something you want to do with it just a small cut type thing got a space blanket we got videos on on those and some cool tricks you can do with them a notepad I, I keep handy because uh, this is a lot of times I carry this when I'm on the road um, this is Purell but you know when this when the Purell gel runs out and I don't actually like a lot of these gel hand sanitizers because there's a few things um, they're usually like 60 70 percent alcohol um, and you need it to be a higher percentage as it is alcohol doesn't isn't a wide um, a wide spectrum killer like a PVP iodine is so or BZK so as it is it's not that great of a of a antiseptic I'd prefer to use um, vinegar because um, it's, it's similar in killing ability in range and it's cheaper and you can use it for a lot more different things um, the other thing is sometimes these are isopropyl um, and it's fine. What I do is when the gel runs out and the scent, I don't really like having the scent in here and all the other gunk they, they put in there because you usually use the stuff where you want to eat or something. You want to sterilize your hands. And then you're eating scents and, and other chemicals and stuff. When the gel runs out, I save these little containers um, just personally. Um, and I refill them with some rubbing alcohol, isopropyl. Um, but what you really want actually is, and some of these will have it, I think Pure I'll switch to it now, is you want ethyl alcohol which is the drinking alcohol and they always have to put some other poisonous gunk in there which then you have to eat because it's they don't want you to drink it to get drunk um, but they want to make it poisonous according to federal law so that so that you don't drink it to get drunk and then you're using it on your hands before you eat and so you're eating the, the poison stuff that you know it's it's crazy um, so isopropyl you don't you don't want to be eating that either but it evaporates off if it's just pure isopropyl which is what I use and I use a high percent, you want the 90% or better. And some places like Rite Aid will sell you ethyl alcohol. And again, it's going to have denatured, it's going to have some nasty poison in it. So ideally, you just put some vodka in there. Um, would be great. Just put vodka in there and you can wash your hands with it. It's got the high ethyl content. But again, same sort of problem. You can only get alcohol, um, vodka, 50% usually uh, mixed with water. Not a high enough percentage to do a good job of killing. So it's it gets kind of complicated um, but I have that um, something I save something I have in there just it's mostly for other people that say oh do you have some hand sanitizer and sure that's that's good enough some isopropyl 90 percent kills better than if it was Purell at 70 uh, here's a chem stick one of our 30 minute super bright yellows I've talked about that we only uh, carry these because they make a super bright uh, version otherwise we carry the flat um, 
the flat kind, the flat uh, visi pads from Siloom, the military uh, contractor company that supplies their military with chem lights. Here's the visi pad that has adhesive on the back and has lanyard tabs and gives you a wider area for light and a very bright 12 hours and everything. But they don't make a 30 minute quick version or a 5 minute quick version of these so we ended up getting those yellow um, ones for a brighter option. And it's good at the bottom of a pack or down the sides to give you some stiffness. Um, and they don't accidentally activate very easily. These do sometimes. They're not supposed to, but they're working on that. They've gone through about five different versions of those. Here's some um, surgical paper tape. It's like masking tape, sort of. Um, and you can see I've, I've done, like I showed and talked about in another video, where I've punctured a hole through and I keep it in the baggie so it doesn't get so dirty. And you can see, um, let's tear it open for you. You can see it's already picked up some, like, sort of pocket lint stuff from the inside of here and is getting dirty anyway. Um, and I had another one in here I replaced because it was just all black all over from all the dirt that these pick up so quickly. Um, so that's great to have for bandage wrapping and all that and just as a tape on the road uh, if you need to tape a piece of paper or something. Here's a little spray bottle. Uh, we don't sell one like this but we sell a smaller got one handy here. We sell these ones uh, for a little pocket sprayer for doing our vinegar trick which if you haven't uh, seen our video on you, you gotta go watch that because it's amazing what you can do with vinegar as a deodorant, uh, brushing teeth, as a mouthwash, as a hand sanitizer, all that stuff. But there's the ones we sell. This is one I got as a sample from a company um, that we might carry eventually, but they're very they're very expensive. Um, so they would be expensive to the customer, whereas th these weren't too bad. And these are glass, uh, high duty, um, I mean heavy duty, um, tough, uh, f uh, medical grade uh, glass and these are the same kind of glass that you get injection type vials out of and they use in labs and stuff and that's got a nice little sprayer and I've got some PVP iodine just from a bottle I filled in here for spraying wounds with um, and that's gonna go in that bag but I had it out for another video so this one I'll put a, some vinegar in there um, and then I spray my hands with it and it's and then spray my armpits and, and mouthwash and um, and if that sounds crazy, go watch that video, um, and you'll, you'll find out about that. Here's a little um, cotton, um, cotton. Uh, my brain's starting to go because I'm talking so fast, getting through so much stuff. Um, gauze roll, so you can wrap around um, things. And if you want to know more about these things, want to see them outside the packaging, uh, search through my videos in the channel, and, and there's some where I unwrap it, wrap it around my arm, and all that stuff, and give you a proper show of it. Here's a CPR face shield, so instead of a big bag valve mask for giving CPR, like the EMTs might use, it would take up too much space in a kit like this. Here you've got a plastic um, that folds out into a nice big square, and then in the center a one-way valve you breathe into. And that's really handy for, for protect, uh, protecting yourself from infection and somebody throwing up on you or blood coming out and all that type of stuff. Um, uh, so that's that's very... Um, very handy thing to have in there. It's super lightweight. There's no weight to that because the pla it's just plastic inside there and a little bit of thick, um, thick uh, plastic. Triangle bands. You can see if you don't keep these things inside of a zip bag, then just friction rubs the labeling off. So usually when we send these to you, we'll, we'll probably put them in a, a zip bag and you might want to keep it in the zip bag even though you're adding a tiny bit of weight after you get 20 or 30 zip bags, you're starting to add a quarter ounce to, to your gear, but it's, it's nice to not have stuff rubbing off. Uh, just a little um, vegetable bag you get from Safeway and stuff, uh, or anywhere else, Walmart, for in the vegetable section. Um, and I just keep one handy for um, bagging other things up, uh, for rain protection. Uh, one of the big ones is I can pull that over this whole bag if it's really just downpouring and I don't want the stuff getting soaked, even though you can see I baggy most things that can potentially get wet and get damaged. Um, I put an individual baggie, but still, I might want to pull pull that over that keep this from getting soaked. Here's a smaller, um, one of our smaller one ounce tins. And I think this is a fire starting kit, and it's got a band aid. And like I did earlier, I've got a little. I get that out of there. I've got a band aid and a little. Um, this is an upgrade. The instead of the triple antibiotic, it's got the the PVP like over there. Um, iodine ointment so that's a more modern uh, one so you got a little tiny boo-boo uh, kit there uh, some cotton uh, pads you can either use for for wound treatment as, as a gauze type thing or as a um, as a um, as a fire starting tinder and I've got another one at the bottom of this and you can see I've got um, I've got a couple little candles 
a little shorty candles with just a wick with wax on the outside like a birthday candle and we make and sell those and that's just so you can have like basically like a lighter that, that doesn't seem like much that little candle but that'll burn for a good couple minutes it burns real slow it's not like a match where it just burns down instantly you can hold that and it'll just keep burning and burning and slowly moves down so it's it's great to have we've got one of our little uh, one one and a half inch uh, Silume chem lights where you snap it and it, it glows uh, so that's great if you you know just for a little micro survival kit like this it's just enough light if it's just pitch black outside um, you can um, you can uh, you see what you're doing just to get a little bit of a fire starter just to get the candles lit and get some light and get some things going here's a SOG uh, micron, I'm not going to get out of there because it's it fits in there just perfectly and it's hard to get in and out but SOG micron um, and we, we have a limited supply of these uh, available with some of these kits it's a really great striker because it's almost like just sheet metal that's been put together and so it's got real rough edges um, and on the back of the blade here that flips out it's got little teeth there to give you a little thumb grip um, and so you, you get a really good um, spark off of a ferro rod. And so here's a ferro rod. And a tip you want to know is if you have ferro rods, you're always going to want to baggy them um, because any kind of salt uh, that gets anywhere around these, any other metals that comes in contact with, you have the potential of these rusting really quick. It's not quite rusting because they're not steel, they're a mix of metals. But because they're a mix, you, you get uh, a thing that happens where, where metals. Um, any kind of salt, any other thing, metals that come along, you can get a, this start to corrode. So it's not really like rusting, but it like starts to turn white and it just melts through and like butter and, and you know, with big gouges and gashes in it. Um, so you want to keep that individually wrapped and if you have any salt packets or anything as an electrolyte, um, which is something we'll include in some of our kits, um, you're going to make sure that the salt's baggy so it doesn't rust your stuff and that that's baggy. On the inside of this tin, I've got some 3M uh, reflective tape. Um, this is what you see on stop signs and, and stuff in the United States and other places. And this is the highest grade. This is diamond grade, uh, the best reflective tape you can get. Um, it doesn't amplify light, so you're, it doesn't um, cheat the laws of physics where you shine a flashlight and you get ten times more light back. What it does is it is it grabs that light and reflects it like a mirror, but it reflects it um, in many different angles. So that stop sign that you pull up to and your headlights hit that stop sign's shining light off to the sides um, and, and forward and up and down and everywhere and it's really lighting up it's just it's grabbing that light and and, and glowing pretty much um, so you get a really good reflection and so you can buy sheets of this um, we don't usually cut these around because it's it's a pain to get this to, to cut round um, and, and mass produce and send out to people but we'll sell you a square of it and then you can cut it yourself and put it on the inside of the tin as an emergency uh, you know, you're stranded somewhere in the woods, you get to a highway, it's nighttime, you need a signal rescue or just regular rescue, helicopters, all that. If they're shining light on you, they still might not see you, so this is a great little reflector. You know, it's going to pick up that headlight um, and the, or the helicopter light or any other light source and it's going to reflect it back, maybe even just moonlight. Um, so that's great. During the day, it's not that great. Just like stop signs, you, you see that they don't really reflect that much during the day because there's too much ambient light. Um, so that's a great little, uh, that's my little fire starting uh, kit that I keep with me. Um, here's our little, um, sort of like the little packets I showed uh, here with the band-aid and the antibiotic. Here's one that's got the little label um, and we call this the PCD PFAC A which is um, pocket first aid kit. Um, PCD is abbreviation Panda Can Do. It's a Panda Can Do pocket first aid kit PFAC and A, because uh, we have a B as well that will have the, the povidone iodine and this one just uh, has triple antibiotic ointment. Uh, actually no, this one has two bandages, yeah it has two bandages, one triple antibiotic ointment, one aspirin, and it has a little thing down here about uh, treating heart attacks. If you think you're having a heart attack, call 911, chew one aspirin, 325 milligrams, um, and it has the source for that is the US uh, DHHS uh, and also the uh, American Journal of um, Cardiology so you know we're not just making up uh, instructions for how to treat somebody with a heart attack aspirin's a common thing to, to get the blood flowing and, and uh, help treat the heart attack immediately uh, um, and then down here it's just got a copyright um, for our, our text here and our image and everything and pandacandu.com the website 
um, and there's a little tab. Uh, this is cool. I took a little Ziploc bag and I figured out I could I could tape on a little piece of paper with a little hole cut out and make a little tab that would uh, let you put this on a keychain or or a carabiner clip it to a to a fanny pack or a backpack. Uh, and again, this is another great little kit. You can just you can have five of these and we sell them I think in ten packs and stuff. Um, and you can just have it and some somebody um, needs a bandage, and a triple antibiotic, maybe an aspirin. As hey, man, you got an aspirin at the campsite or whatever. You just give them that, and it's not a big, you know, you're not, you're not giving out too much. And they're great for if you want to do like giveaways or weddings. Or I've had people ask me for weddings; they want to do a survival giveaway. That's a great little, great little item there. Um, so, got a couple other things. Here's another one of these little vials, uh, like this one here, but this is one I put vinegar in. And you can do rubbing alcohol. You could do banaca. You could do whatever you wanted to do with that. But vinegar is a great one because you can use it for a bunch of different things. Uh, I got a piece of paper. It's just flat printer paper, um, and I just fold it over into a smaller square. And this usually is my writing um, thing instead of a notepad. Uh, somebody's business card. We won't show whoever's that is. Um, I keep a pen. I can't get it out very well, but I keep a pen down in these little um, a little slot, a little zebra foldable pen, which I don't think I'm gonna be able to get out in time to make it worthwhile. A pencil, I keep a little Victoronix nail clippers in there, but any little nail clippers is good to have because you want to you want to keep your nails short for hygiene when camping and hiking and all that stuff. Um, and on the road, you get something splinter coming off. Uh, oh, and you can use I'll do a video on you can use nail clippers to get rid of splinters. You, you, instead of using a needle and poking into you, it pinches the skin, which cuts off all the nerves, um, the nerve ending um, sensor sending signals. Um, and so when you cut the skin off that way, it, it doesn't hurt, and you can you can actually dig down a ways and get to that splinter. Here's a little paper um, mask, a little paper um, surgical mask, very economy, very lightweight is why we got these, and we put those in our surgeon kits, and they're just great if you're assisting in surgery or something uh, on the field, maybe um, helping somebody if you, uh, you have to deliver a baby or something, you can um, keep it somewhat an uh, aseptic. Um, in the front here, you probably thought it was over. Uh, we get to the front here. Uh, let me see if I have anything in this bag. No, I sometimes keep a little shorty um, uh, four seven flashlight in that little pouch. So in the front here, I've got some gloves, and what I've done is I leave them hanging out of that pouch, and then zipper it shut. Get a little bit more in frame here, and not break my glass files. So I zipper this shut, and I leave the gloves hanging out, and that's my way of I can just pull gloves out, put them on right away. And I've got a two black nitrile gloves. Um, in here, I've got a big Ziploc um, like freezer bag. Size for, uh, one of these freezer bags you can get. Um, and this has got all my bigger bandages. And this is nice because I can I squeeze sort of the air out of it and seal it, and that keeps it more compact. That's why some of the stuff sort of wrinkled and packed down. So you got an ABD pad, and that's been squeezed. Normally these are much more uh, larger and puffier. Um, but that one's really squeezed down. Um, I've got some non-adherent pads, some non-woven gauze, some, uh, and then I've got oh, there's a go phone. I'm just using the card to, to give it some stiffness. An old um, somebody else's go phone, pay as you go type card. Uh, some gauze pads, um, and we have some other things we're going to be adding, um, or we've have added to our lineup that I don't have in here, like. Um, well, there's no island dressing in there, and there's no, um, which I'll want to add, and there's no, um, uh, there's no um, clear uh, dressing because we have a clear plastic one that has adhesive on it, uh, lets you dress a wound and still be able to see into it and see what's going on and everything. Um, and there's other little odds and ends we'll be 